What's going on guys? It's Kyle. Welcome to the Stock Goat YouTube channel. In today's video, we're going to cover the overall market. We will also cover the SoFi stock. If you are new to this channel and you find any of this information useful, be sure to subscribe to the channel. We will be keeping you updated daily and please help me out for the YouTube algorithm. Smash the like button. Let's try and get this video over a thousand likes and don't forget to drop a comment. I'm going to be coming back to any questions that you guys have. Let's get into the video. All right, guys, we can see stock market news, live updates, stocks, log, modest gains after a choppy start to the week. So we actually had a green day today coming out on the Monday. We know we sold off at the end of the week on the Friday. Um, let's just scroll down a little bit more. All three major indexes struggled to recover from the sell-off on Friday that rounded out another down week on Wall Street. So today was just a really flat day. As we can see here, guys, SEC uh, updated document. Anthony Noto bought another 150,000 worth of shares, 21,700 units at $6.90, increasing direct ownership by 0.6% to 3.3.5 uh, million units. So guys, Anthony Noto is continuing to buy shares, okay? We are in June. What you need to realize is June is literally the last month of Q2. You got January, February, March, and then you got second quarter, April, May, June. So literally the quarter is over in three weeks, okay? He's loading up heading into, you know, the earnings ending, okay? Shouldn't he be offloading and selling shares if he thinks, you know, this next quarter is going to be a disaster? We know how bad earnings goes, you know, uh, stocks sell off 30, 40, 50%, okay? He is continuing to accumulate. And that's because I personally believe they're going for four quarters in a row of earnings beats. They've already beat the last nine months. I think this is going to be the best quarter for SoFi in company history, because this is the first quarter with the bank charter license where they're going to save costs, saving money, not having to go through these third-party banks. And also the Technicist acquisition is going to bring in another $20 million plus. This could be a huge quarter on revenue and also a really good quarter on, you know, net loss coming down finally, okay? I would like to see net loss come from, you know, 110 to maybe $60 million or less, even with the stock-based compensation. So, guys... Anthony Noda's loading up. I think they're going to have another great quarter for SoFi, potentially the best quarter yet. Let's keep going on to the video. We can see here S&P 500, barely green. Dow, barely green. NASDAQ did actually the best, almost a half a percent. Russell, 0.3, and then crude oil, a little bit red. SoFi down 1.7% on the day, so we didn't even get any part of that index green. There is a reason why on this channel. We're always going to bring you the reason why. If SoFi lags the overall market because that's never a good sign. And you can see here we got looped into another BS category that really has nothing to do with SoFi. It's just when you get into these, you know, baskets of tech stocks, there's an algorithm that just baskets them together. And we got stuck with a firm today. Apple leaps into buy now, pay later space as a firm stock takes a hit. And look at that. We're taking a hit with the firm. You can see a firm was down 5.5% on the day. So we didn't take as big of a hit, but still 1.7%. I mean, that's absolutely nonsense. We don't even have a buy now, pay later business set up for SoFi. So you can see there is just a fintech algorithm basket that we just cannot get out of. And it sucks, you know. We have to deal with, you know, the student loan dilemma for two and a half years. And then now we're getting into the buy now, pay later against the biggest company in the world. It's just it's just a rough market. That's why I took the last three days off, you know, on Friday and on the weekend. Once Jamie Dimon, you know, left his comments. I just feel like there's too much manipulation with the media inside of the markets right now. And then we had Friday after Jamie Dimon spoke, Tesla cutting headcount. I just didn't really want to, you know, do YouTube videos because your stocks are just not going to correlate to what the companies are doing. Your stocks are going to correlate to what the media runs with daily. And you can see, you know, when you talk about Apple coming out with buy now, pay later, uh, trying to disrupt the fintechs even more. It's just, you know, it's a rough day for SoFi and it sucks. I believe all of this, you know, movement the past two weeks is complete nonsense. We know why the market has been going down for eight months. We're talking an eight month correction since November, guys. It's because our inflation continues to accelerate. Hopefully now the eighth month comes around and we finally peak. OK, that is the only thing. That is going to get the stock market to have a reversal. We need to see inflation start to come down, slow down, peak, 
We just need that to happen, okay? And we can see right here, CPI data is on June 10th, okay? If the CPI data comes out bad, the indexes are gonna drop 4%. If the CPI data comes back good, we may be able to finally start the next bull run for the market on the back end of 2022. Um, we just need to get by this inflation. Yes, it's the highest inflation in 40 years, but you know, people will start to feel more confidence mostly uh, these big uh, banks, institutions will feel more confidence when inflation slows down a little. It does not have to drop from 8.3% to five or six, okay? We just need to get down a little bit, maybe a half a percent, maybe 0 0.03. We just need to finally start to slow down inflation. June 10th, I believe that's gonna be Friday. Uh, let's hope that you know we can get out of this eighth month correction. Taking a look at the overall market, there really wasn't a lot of big red. It was just a little small red on the day. We have 105 growth stocks, Carvana, Tilray, and Affirm, you know, was the third worst stock out of every company. Upstart following the pattern. We know these stocks, I've, I've been telling you guys, they go up 10% all the time, but they go down 5 to 15% all the time. New Bank as well, Open Door, this thing. These are a lot of day trading stocks in this type of market, okay? No one's really going long. They're just playing and then we have SoFi uh, down 1.7, finishing 88th on the day. Very, very terrible day. Uh, actually, a quite a bit of stocks, you know, under, you know, in the red, you know, zero to one percent. Okay, Boeing, Beyond Me, J.P. Morgan. We'll just go all the way to the top, and we can see we have, you know, two China companies, Neo and JD, six percent. Okay, I heard some good news going around in China. I'm, I'm not buying China stocks at this moment because I can't even get out of the red in my American stocks. So why am I going to go invest in China right now? Uh, Coinbase has been uh, making a bit of a comeback. Uh, semiconductors, we can see Indy Semiconductor. This is one of the small ones. Made a nice bounce back today. Um, so, you know, a little bit of green uh, on the top end, but, you know, just a flat day overall. But it just sucks to see SoFi get looped into that buy now pay later business now we're going to take a look at the options flow you know bar chart what's going on puts and calls i told you guys on my last video when i was covering the call options that i did see the call options are starting to slow down the past couple of weeks we just really got to get by this huge week on june 17th you can see here 188,000 calls but guys look at the like four weeks you know the week prior which is this week there's only 37,000 calls and then three weeks after there's barely any calls and then we go into a big week. So pretty much four out of the next five weeks of calls are nothing, you know, 2,000, 9,000, 15, 37,000. And it was actually like that last week as well. So we pretty much had low call options for the last six weeks, it seems like. So really need to get by these calls, this 188, 188,000 calls. There's also a lot of puts so it could just be a flat day it just sucks how many puts and calls are being bought on the stock for over a year i believe that is really what's hammering a lot of the stock market because a lot of new investors got into the market started buying calls weekly and you know these are really starting to you know hold stocks from moving you know just because they're not going to pay out you know 188,000 calls flying up 15 percent on the week it just doesn't work like that anymore so i want to see us just get by these June calls. Hopefully inflation slows down in the next two months and maybe we make a little bit of a comeback and they pay out these calls right here, you know, for, uh, you know, July. And even the next two weeks of calls are pretty low. So a lot of low uh, call options, you know, volume in my opinion, when you're talking one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight weeks of calls with only two over, you know, 30,000. Okay. So I like what I'm saying. Sure, these are the leaps, you know, the, the January uh, 2023, these are the leaps, so I wouldn't really count the leaps. I'm just talking about the call options, you know, in the middle of these leaps. So it looks pretty low, in my personal opinion. You can go look at companies like Palantir, Neo, Apple. I mean, they still have, you know, way, way insane calls, you know, compared to what I'm seeing for SoFi right now. So we just need to get by this June get by the CPI data on Friday and hopefully, you know, some good things start to happen. Hey guys, take a look at this. I've been covering the short interest on SoFi for months now. It went all the way from 10, all the way up to 22 to 23% is the highest. I haven't covered it in about two weeks, guys. We've dropped from 23% to 17%. Look right here, guys. 
So as SoFi is coming down really slow, there's a lot of covering going on. I mean, 6% of the short interest has came off and notice that's getting closer and closer to a potentially good CPI report finally where we reverse and you know don't have month over month increase. So as you can see, short interest has dropped from 23% to 17%. Uh, SoFi is selling off very slow as we can see today, you know, help, holding up pretty decent. Hopefully we can get by the CPI report on Friday. I believe that's the most important thing in the stock market to, you know, have these institutions start to buy again. So if you made it to the end of the video, I want to say I really do appreciate it. I enjoyed doing this video for you. I hope this video got you updated on, you know, what's going on with the overall market, CPI data, SoFi short interest, SoFi call options, volume, buy now, pay later space with Apple, you know, taking a hit on a firm. Hope this video gave you a good update of what's going on. Be sure to smash the like button. Don't forget to drop a comment. My name's Kyle. Hope you have a great day.